everybody, Lord Tremendous here, got another better report here for you. This is game 4 of 4 of Tremendicon 2014. The New Orleans crew invades! Uh, obviously, this is a 2500 point battle. Lord Tremendous of the Warriors of Chaos, that's me, versus Tubas and Top Hats of the Ogre Kingdoms. You'll understand in a minute why, it's a very cool ogre army. Here's my list, which is more of the same. Uh, I have my Demon Prince, Lord Tremendous. He's got the Mark Zine, which is level 4 Wizard, Chaos Armor, Charm Shield, Dragon Bane Gem, other Trickster Shard, <gasps> Soul Feeder, Scaled Skin, Flame Breath, and Laura Metal. My hero choices are my exalted hero, Lady Elizabeth, with the Mark of Zinch, Chaos Deed, BSB, Halberd, uh, Helm of Many Eyes, Dawnstone, and Poisonous Slime. Last but not least, my newly titled, named, whatever, Exalted Hero, Castastrophe. He's got the Mark of Zinch, he's on a demonic mount, he's got a halberd, he's got the Talisman of Preservation, Third Eye of Zinch, and Burning Body. My core choices are five Warhounds, the Manipulative Mutts, and they're butt naked, 18 Chaos Warriors, Blood Tide, uh, Mark Korn, Halberds, Full Command Banner Rage, and 17 Forsaken. My special choices consist of five Chaos Knights, Elizabeth's Honor Guard, with Mark Zinch and Sorcelled Weapons, Banner Musician, and the Standard of Discipline, and five more Chaos Knights, Cass's the Spoilers, with the Mark of Nurgle, Lance's Banner Musician, and the Banner of Swiftness. My rare choice is the one, the only, the magnificent, the Mutilith Vortex. <laughs> Gotta love the beast. My opponent's list, I forgot to get a uh, picture of his army list. I forgot to get a copy of it, and uh, I'm sorry. Just completely forgot to get it. Suffice it to say, he's got some ogres. My bad, guys. My bad. These are my spells. Four from Metal and one from the Beast. And these are his spells. Uh, four from the Lord of the Big Maw. He's got a Slaughtermaster as his general. And he's got Fireball. He's got a Firebelly, and he's got Fireball on him. Here's deployment. Uh, when you see it, you'll poop bricks. Uh, anyway, the reason that I deployed like this is as follows. My Nurgle Knights on the right flank were supposed to take care of the stupid cat for me. That was the idea. My Demon Prince is over there for the same reason. We're just going to get that cat the heck out of the way immediately. Actually, my Demon Prince is over there because I was hoping to use the hill and the, uh, what's it called, the impassable terrain as a deterrent for his cannons. Uh, that was the hope anyway. Uh, my Nurgle Knights were just going to go in there because if they could get a flank charge off on the Iron Guts, especially with Lances and Nurgle Knights, oh, that would have been the sexy. My Zinch Knights were in the front because they were either going to deal with uh, the Iron Guts with my Nurgle Knights and my Demon Prince in tow, or they were going to try to get a flank on the uh, Mornfang that he has there. Uh, my Forsaken and my Corn Warriors uh, are in there with the dogs in front of the Corn Warriors. The entire idea there was to make it so that the Mornfang charge the dogs, hit them, or, or you know fail a charge against them so that my Forsaken and my uh, Corn Warriors can hit the Mornfang at the exact same time. Uh, my Beast was in place behind the impassable terrain so that his cannons had something to shoot at. I hate to use my Beast like that, but the entire purpose here was big, scary target that's hiding from his cannons. I was hoping to keep the attention on the beast with his cannons. Uh, and uh, Castastrophe's job was to deal with the cannons. I really didn't have a plan for the man-eaters other than who's ever closest to him can deal with them. It wasn't until after deployment that I found out they had the banner of uh, Eternal Flame, not to mention poison shots, uh, and the brace of handguns. Although he did tell me all that, I, I had already placed the beast, so well done by my opponent. Well done. Here's my opponent's right flank. Uh, where the guys on the hill are is actually where his man-eaters are, uh, and that's also where the top hats comes from, tubas and top hats. As you can see, they all have top hats and uh, two handguns, so they're very cool, actually. Very devastating unit. And right next to them on the hill, uh, slightly behind them, is one of his iron blasters. Here's his center, and as you can see from left to right, there's his other Iron Blaster, his Mornfang, and his huge unit of Iron Guts with BSB. As you can see, he's got a magnificent BSB, and his Slaughtermaster. Also in there is a unit champion, and if you look closely at the ogre on our right in the Iron Gut unit, front right there, he's got a big old tuba, so guess which one the musician is? And here's his left flank, which consists of a kitty. 
Here's my right flank, which consists of my Demon Prince and my Nurgle Knights. And here's my center. From right to left, there's my Zinch Knights with Lady Elizabeth. There's my Corn Warriors. In front of them are my Naked Dogs. And there's my Forsaken, looking for love. And here's my left flank, which consists of Castastrophe and The Beast. Here's top one after Boomin, and lo and behold, I actually got to go first. It was very sexy, and so what do I do immediately? I expose my Demon Prince. <laughs> very stupid move on my part. Uh, but I also exposed the Beast, and I was hoping that that was going to catch everyone's attention. Uh, Castastrophe runs up in order to get near where the uh, Iron Blasts are so I can try to kill them. Uh, the dogs run up, daring the Mornfang to charge, and the... Chaos, or the Corn Warriors and the Forsaken stand by in case the Morphane get froggy. Meanwhile, my Zinch Knights sit right where they're at, and my Nurgle Knights move up, getting ready for the Iron Guts to come forward. I was kind of half expecting the Iron Guts to charge my Zinch Knights. I was hoping they would fail and I'd be able to get flank charges all day, but, well, you'll see what happens. During my magic phase, I get a final transmutation off on the Iron Guts. I was thrilled because I was unaware whether or not they had the Rune Fang or whatever. They did not. Uh, so I got all excited. I don't do anything. I kill one Iron Gut. That's all I rolled. One six. That's it. Out of like four, three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen, uh, uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen models, I roll one six. So at least mass stupidity is everywhere, and it was an irresistible force, right? So we'll try to stay glass half full during this game. Ah. <sighs> So, we go to bottom of one because I don't have a shooting phase and we're not in combat yet. And you're looking at it. Uh, for the most part, he doesn't fall for any of my ploys. His Iron Guts just kind of hang back. His uh, kitty comes up to stop my Demon Prince from charging into his Iron Guts. Uh, his Iron Blasters both don't give a flying F about the beast and turn to face the Demon Prince. And uh, his ma man ears just back up a few inches. That's it. Uh, his magic phase is a wash, but during his shooting phase, his man-eaters fire at my beast, and I find out that they have flaming poison shots. Really scared the hell out of me. Uh, the beast takes two wounds. I was actually able to armor save a couple, so I got really lucky there. And now the beast is going to go into full flight mode, because I had no idea he had that until he shot it, which really made me nervous. Uh, then his cannons, his iron blasters fire. The first one fires at my demon prince and bounces off the charm shield, thank god. And then, uh, the second one fires at the Nurgle Knights and kills one. And, you know what, if they're gonna play catch with a cannon, what, what can you do? They're gonna, I'm gonna lose one. I'd rather lose a Nurgle Knight than a demon prince any day. Uh, with shooting all wrapped up, we go to top of two after movement, and here you go. The beast dives behind cover, because now I'm terrified. Castastrophe moves up with the Dickens, because he want I wanted him to think that I was going after his Mornfang, so he would move them, but really, I wanted his Iron Blaster. Uh, my Demon Prince moves behind cover because I'm just going to final transmutation his Iron Gut unit until they either give me the flank charge I know and love or my Demon Prince has to move away. And plus, being behind the impassable terrain, the cannons can't hit me as well because they can't see the point that they're targeting. Or, well, they can't target the uh, impassable... Th Bottom line is they can't hit me, which is awesome. And my Nurgle Knights slam into the kitty because the kitty's got to die. Meanwhile, my Zinch Knights pretty much just stay put because they're perfect bait right now. There's a better picture of my Nurgle Knights hitting the kitty. Uh, during the magic phase, I get final transmutation off Irresistible Force this time on the Iron Guts. I only get one more, but the one that I get is his general. I roll a six, and I get his general. The Slaughtermaster is toast. Oh, man. Oh, I was thrilled. Oh, that's not entirely true. I do pick up one more Iron Gut as well. So... Two Iron Guts and the Slaughtermaster are now solid gold. And I was thrilled. My opponent, of course, was upset and totally understandable. Not like he was being a jerk or anything like that, just obviously upset that his Slaughtermaster general with the Crown of Command uh, is now gone. Uh, so I got lucky as hell, one in six chance, got him, and now that unit is much more manageable because it can break. <laughs> Uh, like I said, it was Irresistible Force, uh, the miscast 8.
results in basically nothing. Uh, I, I don't take a wound. He fails to wound me. He's, uh, his dice actually at this point start turning on him rather spectacularly. Uh, strength 6 hit on my Demon Prince, and he rolls a 1 to wound. So, bonus. Uh, because I never roll against my own army. And, uh, yeah, it ends my magic phase, but my magic phase was about as effective as I needed it to be killing the Slaughtermaster. So, that was outstanding. Uh, and then we go into combat, and lo and behold, my Nurgle Knights don't actually flub and kill the kitty, so I feel pretty good about that. With all that said and done, we go into top of two after movement, and his Mornfang charge my dogs and go boxcar. My dogs flee, and he goes boxcars, catching the dogs no problem because they only ran five inches. But since he didn't redirect, he has to stop an inch in front of the Corn Warriors, which is huge. Because now my Corn Warriors and my Forsaken have no problem slamming into those Mornfang next turn and just decimating them, hopefully. Uh, meanwhile, one of his Iron Blasters charges Saval on the flank. I felt pretty confident about this one because it's... It, I'm sorry, Catastrophe gets charged in the flank. I felt confident about it because I figured with his... 2-up armor in close combat and 3-up ward, he shouldn't take anything. I should be able to do 2 wounds to this thing with strength 6 and 5. You know, 4 strength 6 attacks and 2 strength 5 attacks. I should be able to do a couple of wounds to him. At least even this combat out. Turn to face and now an Iron Blaster is not shooting anymore. Uh, so I was okay with taking that charge. Uh, his man-eaters readjust a little bit to shoot at my warriors or my knights or something. Uh, the other Iron Blaster turns to face, uh, I think, my, my Zinch Knights. I'm not really sure what he sh was getting ready to shoot at. And his Fire Belly runs out of the Iron Guts to get over near my uh, Demon Prince because he wanted to use the Hell Heart. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why everything is the way it is. There's a better picture of the Mornfang uh, just thundering down the damn battlefield and stopping an inch away from the Corn Warriors due to a rule snafu. And there's a better picture of his Iron Blaster slamming into uh, Cass's flank. And like I said, I, I was confident about it when I took the charge. And then as I started thinking about it, I was like, God, I hope I don't flub. Oh, God, I'm going to flub, aren't I? So, yeah, yeah, I was a little nervous. Uh, his magic phase is now destroyed because he's just got the level 1 to my level 4, so I stop his spell no problem. Uh, and then he gets the miss, uh, he fires his Iron Blaster in a shooting phase at my Zinch Knights and rolls a Misfire 3 so it can't shoot this turn or next. Uh, I'll take that. I'll take a Misfire 3 any day. Uh, however, the Man-Eaters take uh, some pot shots at my Forsaken and get one for their trouble. Uh, and once again, I know that I've got proxy models with the Corn Warriors in there and stuff like that, but my wife is painting the rest of the Forsaken. She is now done, so I will have the Forsaken back in the army within the next few battle reports. Uh, during combat, the Iron Blaster shocks me a little bit and is actually able to slip a wound through on Castastrophe, and Castastrophe only does one wound back, so I actually lose this combat by two. Anybody want to guess what happens when I lose combat by two? That's right, I break and flee and get caught and run down. Ugh! <laughs> Castastrophe. Ah, oh, I hardly knew you, buddy. But I still like the model. I still like what he does. It was just unfortunate that I had to roll dice. And yeah, he, he's able to smush Castastrophe and overrun quite a distance. So, with embarrassment high on my plate, we go to top of three after movement, and... Uh, yeah, it's the best parts of the Bible, really. My Corn Warriors and my Forsaken slam into his Mornfang, and that has got me tingly inside. My Zinch Knights charge his Iron Blaster that just killed Castastrophe, and it flees and gets away. Uh, which really isn't... It was a good move by my opponent, because it puts my Zinch Knights in a really bad position to be charged by his Iron Guts. I, I realized it after I declared a charge. I was like, oh, that's not good. Uh, they couldn't see the Mornfang, so before you ask, no, I couldn't charge my Knights into the Mornfang, so what can you do? Other than that, uh, my Nurgle Knights stay put at that point because I realize that his Iron Bla or his uh, Iron Guts are going to charge my Zinch Knights and I will need to counter charge with my Nurgle Knights. And my Demon Prince just kind of backs up a little bit so that he can charge the Iron Guts as well if they decide to charge. And he wants to take some pot shots at his Fire Belly with uh, something. I haven't quite decided what yet. Here's a better picture of my Corn Warriors and my Forsaken slamming into the Mornfang. And if you ever get Mornfang in a position like this, you've done something right. I got lucky as hell that his dice rolls were as... I mean, his dice were just screwing him in this game really bad. The boxcar charge and then not redirecting and hitting, you know, being an inch away from my Corn Warriors, that 
I mean, how could you plan for that, right? So, yeah, him being, you know, right where he's at because he caught my dogs was just terrible. And then the flea would have just been a mistake because I charged with my warriors first. They would have fled, and then the, the Zinch Knights would have charged, causing them to either be way out of position or get caught and run down. So standing his ground was probably the best hope because it's still a tough unit to crack, but it's so many attacks coming at him. Just, you know, what can he do? And then uh, here's the failed charge right here. The Zinch Knights going after the Iron Blaster that fled. Uh, magic is a wash, and so is shooting, because I don't believe in it. So we go into combat, and it's ugly. My corn warriors and my forsaken. My forsaken actually end up getting uh, armor piercing, which is about as good as it could have got, other than maybe poison. And my corn warriors and my forsaken. I mean, my corn warriors are hitting on threes, wounded on threes. My forsaken are hitting on rerollable fours, wounding on f fours, I believe. And with armor piercing, everything was negative two. It was brutal. I think the one guy that was left uh, broke. And that forced both of my guys to have to overrun, or to pursue anyway, and because they're both frenzied. They both do. The Forsaken stay right where they're at, and I believe my Corn Warriors move up about five inches or so. But uh, all in all, I got rid of a very dangerous unit uh, with uh, zero casualties other than the dogs, and I'll take that trade any day. I was very happy. So, we go to bottom of three after movement, and you're looking at it. Uh, his Iron Guts tried to charge my uh, Zinch Knights, who stood, and he failed his charge. Again, not my opponent's fault. His dice have just literally been screwing him all game. Uh, I, I actually started to feel bad for him, because he's got the casino dice and everything, and he's just crapping out left and right. Uh, his one Iron Blaster that was fleeing does rally. The other one stands, turns around and gets ready to shoot at the incoming knights. And the man-eaters turn around to start uh, whittling down my infantry units. There's a better picture of his Iron Guts failing their charge. And that was just terrible luck. I think he needed a 6 to hit me, and he rolled like a 3. I mean, it was really, really terrible for my opponent. I feel bad for the guy. Real good opponent. Uh, this I played him in like an earlier battle report somewhere in the 40s or 30s i believe and uh we got a draw and that was only by a, 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 a sneaky shot by me in the end that actually pulled it out to a draw he was kicking my butt before then so yeah his dice are definitely on my side during this entire game and uh, i took him out to dinner afterwards and believe it or not dice don't eat that much so it was a it was a very cheap date uh yeah yeah because the date or the dice are just they they couldn't do more for me if they tried and uh, there's a better picture of his Iron Blaster rallying, too. Uh, during his magic phase, he gets he tries to, uh, uh, or he, he attempts, he, he gets off the 3d6 fireball at my Nurgle Knights, and I'm thinking, eh, strength 4, negative 1 to my armor safe, I'll be fine. <sighs> I gotta stop thinking. Yeah, two of my Nurgle Knights open, unzip their damn armor and decide, okay, cool, I could use a warm-up, and two of them, they get so warm, they die. Flippin' idiots. But yeah, two of the, uh, the, the Nurgle Knights die, and the two that are left do pass their panic check, but unbelievable, right? <laughs> eh, well, I guess not everything can go my way. So, we go to top of four after movement, and more of what you expect from Lord Tremendous Charges occurs. My Zinch Knights charge the Iron Guts and fail. My Corn Warriors charge the Iron Guts and fail. My Forsaken charge the Iron Blaster and fail. My Beast moves up to, char or to, to try to get closer to the uh, Man Eaters to mess with their stats because now that everything has failed their dang charges, the Beast has to go up there and give the Man Eaters something else to charge. So that's awesome. Uh, meanwhile, my Demon Prince runs forward to try to uh, block the Iron Guts uh, charging the, the the Nurgle or the Zinch Knights, and I kind of fail at that because I just ran out of movement. And then my Nurgle Knights also tried to charge the Iron Guts and failed. So, yeah, one, two, three, four failed charges in one turn. Ah, uh, what can you do, right? Yeah, there's a better picture of the three units that tried to charge the Iron Guts failing like champions. So, what can you do? Uh, during the magic phase, my beast does actually get his spell off on the man eaters, and it's the template one, and it ends up hitting like six, all six of them, because it direct hits, as you can see, but only one guy right there. There you go. Uh, actually, he only fails one of the toughness checks, so he takes one wound. It's not a big deal. Uh, not to be deterred, however, since my Demon Prince isn't in combat, I fire off Searing Doom at his Iron Blaster that had a wound on it, and I obliterate that mofo, which is good, because cannons have to go bye-bye. I, I am not a huge fan of cannons. 
So, with that all said and done, and my failure to charge and make it into combat, we go into bottom of four after movement, and the ogres do what ogres do best, and actually make charges. His iron guts slam into my zinch knights, his man eaters slam into my beast, which sucks, because you know the beast is dead. However, the beast is only 240 points, the forsaken are 300 and something points, so losing the beast is much better than losing the forsaken. Not thrilled with this, but it's better than what the outcome could have been. Uh, meanwhile, his cat stays where it's at, and the Iron Blaster targets my uh, Demon Prince. Oh, I'm sorry, and his Fire Belly charges into my Nurgle Knights, and as you can see, there's the Fire Belly into my Nurgle Knights, and I felt okay with this combat, because I'm thinking, yeah, he's got a charge and a flank, but I've got a banner, and I've, I'm Mark Nurgle, I, I can handle this, my Demon Prince is within 12 inches, I should be fine. <sighs> and uh, there's a better picture of his Iron Guts slamming into my Zinch Knights, which I was very nervous about. And there's a better picture of his man-eater slamming into my beast, which I we already know what's going to happen there, and that really sucks. Uh, yep, there's no shooting, and magic is a wash, so we go straight into combat, and ah, oh, my beast gets pulverized. Uh, before the beast can even do anything, his uh, man-eaters just, just mulch him uh, with flaming attacks because of Banner of Eternal Flame and poison and all that other good stuff. It was not hard for the man-eaters to take down the beast, and... Unfortunately, I had to sacrifice him in order to save the Forsaken. Uh, my Beast is just a hero. He's a martyr now, uh, but yeah, he's just a hero. And Beast, I'm, I'm sorry, and thank you for your sacrifice. Not to let the man-eaters outdo what they did to my beast, the uh, fire belly gets into the combat. I do no wounds to him. He's able to hit, wound, and kill one of my Nurgle knights because, you know what? The hell with Nurgle. Uh, I just don't like him. I just don't like him at all. Uh, and uh, he, not, he, so he's got charge, flank, wound to my banner. I lose by two. And guess what happens? Anybody want to guess? Yep, yep, you guessed it. I break and die. Because <laughs> when I f lose a combat, I break and die. <sighs> oh well, you know, it's probably because they were Nurgle Knights, those scumbags. <sighs> kind of happy to see them dead. So, then we go over to this combat here with the Iron Guts, and it is bloody. Uh, my BSB gets into a challenge with his BSB. I do one wound to his BSB. He's not able to do anything to me, mostly thanks to the Dawnstone. Uh, but he rolls all four of his attacks, actually. I take that back. It had nothing to do with the Dawnstone. He rolls all four of his attacks with his BSB and fails to hit even once. It's horrible. His dice have just completely abandoned him. Uh, his Iron Guts attacks flub pretty bad. Uh, three of my Zinch Knights still die, but I'm able to kill two. I think I do six wounds to his unit with just my attacks first, and it's just awful. Just flipping awful. Uh, his dice turn on him really bad. I do end up losing this combat, but thanks to Leadership 9, because of the standard discipline and the BSB, I actually make a break check, and we stand. And that's good, because I have a lot of counter charges that are ready to go. So, we go into top of five after movement, and my Forsaken charge into his man-eaters, who just reformed after killing the, uh, the beast, which was good, because now my Forsaken were able to slam into him and possibly take him out. My Corn Warriors slam into the Iron Guts, and my Demon Prince slam into the Iron Guts, because I need to take the Iron Guts down quick. Uh, so with that said and done, everything else is dead or in combat, so... Here's a better picture of my Forsaken slamming into the Man-Eaters, and I'm pretty confident about this charge. I'm feeling pretty good about this one. And here's a better picture, a very bright picture, of my Corn Warriors and my Demon Friends slamming into the Iron Guts, because they have to die. During the magic phase, I get the big golden hounds off on his other iron blaster, and I'm able to do like five wounds to it. I roll six wounds, five wound uh, on a four up two, which was just spectacular and uh, blow up the Iron Blaster, so that was outstanding. Uh, and then uh, we go into combat over here, because shooting is for elves, and as you can see, there's, what, four Iron Guts left? Five, no, yeah, four Iron Guts left, 
and a BSB. Uh, his BSB rolls four more attacks, hits Lady Elizabeth once, fails to wound, because he rolls a one to wound. It's ridiculous how bad his dice rolls are. Uh, I, I lose one more... I lose one Corn Warrior for this whole battle. It's it, His dice were so, so screwing him this game. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I got a hold of him. I was able to pretty much decimate the whole unit, and... They lose by a boatload, and they break. And I run them down. I think my Demon Prince is the one that ended up catching them. And now we're all eyeballing the uh, fire belly, like, hey, hey, we need to talk about what you did to the Norkel Knights. So while I'm thrilled that I'm, I'm finally winning a game, I also feel really bad because the reason I'm winning this game is because my opponent's dice have completely abandoned him. It's almost criminal. Almost. Then over here in combat, it's brutal. My Forsaken end up getting poison, which is flawless awesome right now. I'm able to kill three man I do nine wounds total. Uh, ten, ten wounds total. Uh, three die, one's carrying two wounds, and he's able to kill six of my Forsaken. Really, really brutal uh, 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 combat. But, you know, they're man eaters. They're not going anywhere, and they stay. So we go to bottom of five after movement, and for the most part, the Firebelly passes leadership check and marches as far away as he possibly can, and that's it. Everything else is in combat or dead. Uh, during his uh, magic phase, he gets his fireball spell from his Firebelly off on my Zinch Knights. Uh, I can't remember if I tried to stop this one or if I just let it go, but bottom line is one more Zinch Knight dies. They make their panic check, and life is good. The, oh, that's why. The uh, fireball spell was Irresistible Force. I'm sorry. I've got a lot of games to remember, and it's been a little while. But, yep, the uh, fire belly rolls a miscast 8. Which does nothing. It doesn't hurt him. I think I failed to wound him, and uh, but it ends his magic phase, which was over anyway. Uh, we do do the combat uh, between the Forsaken and the Man-Eaters, and the Forsaken actually destroy the Man-Eaters uh, without taking any wounds because they're just awesome. Uh, I think I actually end up winning that combat. I'm not sure if I kill them all off or if they break uh, and get run down, but bottom line is, here's the end of the game. Don't pay any attention to Man-Eaters because after the Man-Eaters die, my opponent calls the game, which is totally understandable. All he had left was the Fire Belly and I think a Saber Tusk Cat around the corner there, the impassable terrain, kind of off the picture. But uh, the game was over and it was all because of his dice rolls. I mean, they were just extraordinarily bad. And uh, yeah, that's it. In fact, yeah, that's what happened. My uh, Forsaken got Always Strike first this round and were able to slaughter the Maneaters. And once that happened, the game was over. So there it is. There's what happens when the Ogre player's dice completely and totally turn on him. And I feel bad for the guy. He drove all this way to get in a cool game and it ends up his dice just didn't have their hearts in it. But uh, you know what? We'll get into the recap in a minute because right now it's time for a quick timeout. Token time, everybody. Token, token, tokens. Check them out. All the tokens you could need for anything that you could possibly play. Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, Infinity, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pokemon, uh, Infinity, Malifaux, whatever you need tokens for, Token Gal can make the tokens. They're dirt cheap, guys. No more than $8 for a set, but they're solid gold quality. I mean, these are glass beads. They magnify the picture and the words. You've got wound counters. You've got status effects. You've got spell effects. Uh, plus one toughness, minus one strength. You know, whatever you need. It's got all, she's got all the magic lures. She's got everything you need for any system that you play. She's got an uh, email address you can send and be like, hey, I'm looking for this. And now she has a website. Uh, it's there at the bottom. I'm not going to bother reading it off because if you can't read, what the hell are you doing on the internet? Uh, just seriously, though, check her out. Check out her website. Order yourself some tokens. It's totally worth it. You won't regret it. Hey 
guys. I know I've already talked to you about this before, but you should really check these pictures out because they were all painted, including my model, by Unleashed Wargaming. And uh, they have their email right up there at the top of the page, and they've also got it down there. Uh, they got a YouTube channel. He's working on a website. It's not quite ready yet, but yeah, really, if you get a chance, check these guys out. If you're looking for someone to paint your stuff real good, seriously, check these guys out go to his uh, send him an email check out his youtube page it's really worth your time it's a phenomenal job it, it you know it's quick it's painless you don't have to worry about painting your stuff and uh, soon i'll be running a model uh that these guys painted for me and i'm very excited about that but check out these pictures give this guy an email check him out on youtube get your models painted by him if you can it's totally worth it and tell him tremendous sent you as you guys already know, we are going to the Rock Wars GT. I will be there. So it's September 12th to the 14th. Totally excited to be going. Uh, if you want, if you're going to be there, if you just want to show up and say hey or whatever, I would love to meet you guys. I'm really enjoying doing these battle reports. I'm enjoying the comments. I'm enjoying the back and forth. And so by all means, if you're there, you want to swing by, say hey, I would love that. Maybe we get a game in. I would be thrilled to be able to do a battle report with it. But yeah, definitely. Uh, if you guys are there and you want to meet up hey by all means come say hi you'll know my models <laughs> uh, if you're interested in going though if you want to check it out i think there's still some slots open uh check it out rockwarsgt.com it's right there uh real easy to type in you should be able to figure it out but yeah guys come check it out come say hi love to meet you Yeah, I want to let you guys know about a new opportunity for you. It's called the Redstone Rumble. It's a major fantasy 40K Flames of War and War Machine uh, event. Uh, it's in October uh, 4th and 5th in Huntsville, Alabama. And I'm not going to be able to attend because I'm in the military and I'll be elsewhere during that time. Uh, not for a long time, just unfortunately that particular week I'll be out of town, so I can't go. But my loss is your gain because my admission fee had been paid so rather than let that go to waste with the uh, TOs and the event organizers for the Redstone Rumble we have decided to do a giveaway you want to go to the Redstone Rumble are you available to go October 4th and 5th do you want to play Fantasy at 2500 points a 40k tournament at 2000 points Flames of War or War Machine whatever the heck you want to play you can have my ticket uh, the way we're doing a little bit of a giveaway. So basically, in order for you to to win this free admission, and there'll only be one winner, I need you to come up with a great name for any unit I field, except for Lady Elizabeth or Lord Tremendous. They're going to keep their names. But if you wanted to uh, name my Exalted Hero or my, one of my units of Warriors or my Forsaken or my Dogs even the Beast if you want to name the Beast go for it but the trick is you got to impress me I mean it's the free admission pass that I that I'm giving you so impress me earn it I know kind of a foreign concept but no <laughs> earn it rename put just put it in the comment section this will be going on for a little while yet because you know it's out there for a little while so everybody's gonna, gonna get the opportunity to participate uh but by all means if you are available to go to the redstone rumble october 4th and 5th in huntsville alabama uh and you want to get in for free and you have a little bit of cleverness in you or somebody you know is clever rename one of my units put it in the comments section below just mark it hey Here's my here's my entry. This is the unit. This is what I think they should be named. The one that wows me, the one that makes me go, oh, I like that, is the one I'm gonna choose. And you will get free admission to this uh, to this event, the Redstone Rumble. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or whatever like that, just go ahead and go over to www.redstonerumble.com. Check them out. Uh, you can get their contact info and stuff like that. They'd be thrilled to talk to you, I'm sure. Answer all your questions. Really cool guys. Real big in the Warhammer scene. But uh, yeah, guys, this is your opportunity not only name one of Lord Tremendous's units, but to also get yourself a free ticket to a major event. It's worth it. Do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
But yes, finally, out of four games, it was a solid victory for Lord Tremendous, an opponent that rolls worse than I do. Just what I wanted for my birthday. <laughs> it's not my birthday. Uh, I ended up losing uh, Castastrophe, my Warhounds, my Nurgle Knights, who cares, and my Beast. Oh, the poor Beast. I'm sorry, Beast. Uh, the Ogres lost everything but their... Uh, their uh, uh, fire belly, which uh, I mean, uh, the way my gaming group does it is if you surrender, you lose everything. But of course, these guys are from out of town, so technically, he had his fire belly and his uh, saber tusk cat left. But uh, you know, see it however you want, it doesn't change the outcome. Uh, like I've been saying most of the game, uh, his dice just completely screwed him the entire time. There was nothing he could do uh, when his dice were rolling ones and twos at the wrong time. Uh, and it really helped that uh, Final Transmutation got his Slaughter Brute by, like, turn two. It 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 pretty much set the tone for the rest of the game, because at that point, he was on such... Uh, he was so far on his back feet, you know, trying to catch up, because I had I dominated the Magic Phase now, and he had to move when he thought he could just hang back and wait. Uh, it was it was really, really lucky on my part that I got the Slaughter Brute, and I was happy about that, obviously. Uh, but yeah, you gotta love the lower metal. Searing Doom and Golden Hounds taking care of the uh, two Iron Blasters. Final Transmutation taking care of a Slaughtermaster. Just, that's why I take the lower metal. I Because if you have an armor save at all, it can really destroy uh, your army. And uh, even if you've only got a 6-up armor, I mean, Searing Doom gives me D6 shots. If I can roll some 6s, you're probably picking up models. And I'll take it every time. Oh, uh, that Maneater kit was brutal. Not to mention, it was a really cool art unit, wasn't it? With the top hats and the two handguns and everything. I've never seen one like that. It was very cool. I was very impressed. Can't wait to see some paint on it, huh? But uh, having Poison Attack, Stubborn, and then the Banner of Eternal Flame, I was like, oh my god. Flaming Poisoned Attacks with, you know, Strength, whatever, and oof. It was it was terrifying. So I was, uh, I was really lucky that the Maneaters weren't able to do more than they did. Uh, that Maneater, or I'm sorry, the Mornfang charge was huge. I felt bad for my opponent because usually when you roll, you know, box cars on your charge, it's extremely sexy. But unfortunately, he didn't redirect, and we looked at the rule, and yeah, you stop an inch away if you you can't hit an arm, you can't hit a unit without charging him. And uh, so yeah, yeah, he had to stop an inch away from me. And if he had rolled, you know, normal, you know, seven, eight, nine, I, there's a really good chance that my Corn Warriors wouldn't have made the charge, or my Forsaken, or at least not both of them, so, yeah, that was really unfortunate for him, great for me, and it, I capitalized on it, but, yeah, I mean, I, I gotta feel bad for my opponents, you know, when, when they have just terrible luck because of bad dice, uh, really great opponent, though, uh, he had some terrible luck, so don't let this game gauge how this guy plays. He's extremely good at playing Ogres. Just unfortunately, his dice aren't good at rolling. Uh, but it was still a very enjoyable game. He was upbeat the whole time, made, making jokes. We were both laughing, having a good time, so I got no complaints. And hopefully he's only got a few. Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> it was a fun game, and I, I'll, I'm ready for a rematch whenever you are, buddy. But, uh, John, you're the man. Thank you for setting this up. Thank you for coming to to uh, my store and, and setting up the first ever Tremendicon. <laughs> you and your group, of course, are always welcome back at the lair. You guys are always welcome to come and play another game. Uh, it, it'll be a blast, and I hope I get to run into you guys at uh, tournaments throughout the state. Thank you again. This was awesome. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's going to do it uh, for this battle report and Tremendicon 2014. Yay! <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. It was actually a lot of fun, and I was honored to have these four people come up and play some really outstanding games with me. It was a great way to play, spend a Saturday, and uh, I wish I could do it again tomorrow, even though tomorrow's not Saturday. But uh, you get my drift. Uh, as always, though, guys, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But, yeah, guys, thanks.